Hello, everyone. Welcome to this webinar brought to you by Brusa Malaysia and managed by our company Live Champ. Today, our webinar's title is Trading Psychology Keys to Master the Market. So, uh, welcome everyone to this uh, webinar. My name is Shen Chu. I'm the moderator for this uh, session. Now, as you know, uh, trading psychology is a very critical component when it comes to uh, trading. You know, the market is a very emotional place. You know, each trader and investor, we all have emotions in the market. And we may have our trading plan or investing plan, but sometimes we get, we let the emotion uh, comes into uh, the way of, you know, stopping us to achieving our investing objective, okay? And when it comes to making decisions, we are often, you know, influenced by all the biases that we may have that will inhibit us from doing uh, objective and rational decisions. So in this session, we are going to look into what are some of these trading psychologies, how do we master our emotions, how do we avoid all these behavioral biases so we can make an objective and rational investment plan. So disclaimer, whatever we're going to share in this webinar is only for educational purpose. So in no way that we will give you any recommendation to buy or sell any listed securities that we mentioned here. So if you decide to make any investment decisions, you're 100% responsible for all your investment risks. Now, allow me to introduce our speaker today, and he's none other than Mr. David Lowe. Hi. So, <laughs> hi, David. Good to have you here. Yes. <laughs> now, uh, David is a trader and managing partner of Exmodius Trading Group PLT, a consultancy firm specializing in bespoke trading strategies and coaching for private and corporate clients in the equity and commodity markets. He has 25 years of experience in the Malaysia der listed derivative industry. So before starting his own consultancy, David helmed leadership positions in futures brokering divisions of major investment banks in Malaysia. He served as the president of the Malaysian Futures Brokers Association between 2018 and 2019. As a fervent believer in trader education, David has spoken in seminars and workshops to over 5,000 retail traders on trading Bursa Malaysia as well as CME, SGX, and Hong Kong exchange markets. So his work includes live tr market trading sessions and webinars. So uh, David, good to have you here again. Pleasure, pleasure. <laughs> All right. So uh, let me hand over the session to you. Okay. Let me share my screen. Okay. You should be seeing my screen now. Yes, Shane, can perfect. you confirm? Perfect. And good evening to everyone. It's a pleasure to be back. And this is actually the fourth in the series uh, from my side, uh, the, the fourth in uh, the last part of the series which is a very important uh, topic. Uh, tonight, we'll be talking about trading psychology, uh, keys to master the market. And uh, welcome everybody who will join us uh, in the Zoom uh, webinar. And also all those people uh, out there uh, joining from YouTube Live, welcome. A big shout out to you. Uh, welcome and uh, let's have a good session together. Uh, we will have questions uh, at the end of the session. So uh, anytime you have, uh, do put those questions into the Q&A or into the chat box and we'll take those questions at the end of the session, right? So keep it lively. Any questions that you have related to this uh, topic or, or slightly even related to trading, do put in your questions. I'll, I'll take all those questions at the end of the session, right? So tonight we have a very interesting uh, topic and this is one of my favorite topics. It's a very Big topic, of course, trading psychology, right? It covers so many, so many things. Uh, but I want to give you a very digested version um, uh, uh, and share with you also some of my experiences in terms of trading and the impact of the trading psychology even on my own trading. All right, so this is a very important topic, and you 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 will see later that in, uh, as part of the trading side uh, strategy, okay, this forms a very big component, a uh, uh, big uh, piece of a component in the uh, what they call that a uh, trading strategy. Okay, so all these slides are about me and uh, the uh, this uh, disclaimer you've covered, so I won't go there. And this is what we are going to do this evening, right? The first thing is to understand. Uh, why 
psychology is so uh, critical in trading and investment success, right? Okay, the, the mind game, okay, why mind game is so, so important, right? And also, the second thing is how to recognize and differentiate between a winning and a losing uh, mindset, okay? And that will actually, what you call that, uh, uh, make the difference between a winning uh, trader or a losing trader, right? You may have a very good methodology, right? But if you cannot execute it, okay? Or or every time you execute, you have a certain, uh, what you call that, uh, uh, problems in your thinking or you're afraid to even execute a, a, a good strategy, right? Those are the things that actually will block you from being able to uh, have a very good or successful implement uh, execute the very good trading methodology, right? So we'll cover some of those things. What are the things that block you from doing that and how uh, hopefully some tips on how to overcome that as well, right? So that is uh, the third bullet point. We learn uh, some, perhaps some methods to manage uh, the emotions and the mental states uh, during trading. All right, so these are the three big uh, topics that we'll be covering this evening. Right, so let's, let's jump into it, right? The first thing is, of course, you've seen this already. Uh, those of you who have joined uh, in the last uh, couple of sessions that we have, uh, the last uh, few sessions, we already talked about methodology. We've talked about money management. And now, lastly, the last and the biggest, uh, what do you call that component in a strategy, the trading psychology. Right, so this is very very crucial in terms of uh, what you call that uh, the ultimate success of your investment or in your trading. Okay, for those of you who have missed our previous sessions, okay, uh, we had a session on uh, talking about the high probability uh, trading strategies for catching early uh, stock trends. That's in April. Uh, we also had a session on how to design a complete game plan for your trading uh, for trading stock markets. Okay, so uh, last month we had uh, uh, this topic. On uncovering the money management and position sizing strategies on how to maximize your uh, stock returns. If you have missed uh, those sessions, you can always uh, go to the YouTube channel or, uh, by LiveChamp and then you can catch those uh, videos because all of them are related, right? As you can see, we have these three uh, components in a total and complete game plan for trading the stock markets. So go back to those uh, uh, sessions and you can, of course, those who want to review, you can go back to those links and have a look at those sessions again all right so um, of course this session again will be recorded and will be available up on uh, youtube as well all right so um let's get on with it so the first thing i want to cover is actually talk about what is a market right what is actually a market and this is a very important thing to understand what makes up a crowd or, or what makes the market okay so in this picture you can see a crowd of people of course this, this is uh, already uh, no longer existing okay uh, what used to be you know uh, uh, traders on the markets okay this was used to be uh, this is a uh, uh, in chicago right uh, people uh, 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 shouting out their orders buy and sell okay uh, you see a lot of those pictures uh, in uh, cnbc uh, bloomberg uh, uh, news channels as well those on the new york stock exchange right so these are already of course uh, uh, hardly seen anymore, right? Especially uh, in markets that I trade, uh, like the commodities markets, they don't have that anymore, right? But you can see every single person, if you zoom down on every single person, okay, there's a person holding his chin, there's a person clasping his, uh, folding his arms, there's people shouting, people in joy and people who seem to be quite sad. So what is this market, okay? Basically, this market or any market, the equity market or the stock market is actually a reflection of all about human behavior. Okay. And uh, the thing is, is you think about it, let's say, for example, in the beginning of this year, okay, when news hit about uh, uh, Russia going into Ukraine, right, uh, with, uh, uh, with armed forces, right? So uh, markets, of course, moved, right? Now, what caused the market to move, okay? It's actually, uh, the market doesn't move by itself, right? It's actually when people hear the news and people react to the news, okay? And everybody who sees that piece of news may have different, different reactions, right? May do different, different things in the market. Some may buy, some may sell, right? Not necessarily everybody will sell, 
you know, if it's a piece of bad news, not necessarily all will sell. Some may be buying as well for different, different reasons, okay? So all these markets actually reflect human psychology, okay? It reflects the hopes, it reflects the, the fears, right? Some people go into a market to invest uh, for their children's education, okay? Some people go into the market to, to trade for the thrill of it, right? So some people, uh, when they see the market coming, there, coming down, they're happy because there's opportunity to buy. But when the market, same thing happens to another trader, they're in deep fear because they are deep into losses. So very different, different types of psychology inside happening all at one time, okay? So the, this, the market, is actually a, a whole a total sum of all the people's psychology right everything so intense actually in the market right of course you don't see these scenes anymore uh, but everybody's like typing or, or putting their orders uh, with their brokers and all that, or even uh, typing the orders themselves right these days right so no no more this noise shouting and all that right a bit quieter in that sense but then it's still in terms of individual uh, traders uh, like us like me like you you know it's still in, in, in a way very intense, okay? And there's a reason why it's so intense later we'll, we'll delve into that, okay? So everybody is trying to make a judgment. Every time they go in uh, to buy or sell in the market, they are trying to make an judgment okay so everybody's judgment is different of course right so you have a view to go into the market and so you, you go in and buy this particular share okay have you ever wondered uh, on the other side the guy that sold you the share what he's thinking of okay at the same moment you feel the market is going to go up okay you're you're bullish on the market there's another guy who thinks differently right so it's a this whole thing and all this total will make what we call the market Okay, so this is uh, very interesting because in terms of talking about the market psychology, okay, so this is like market psychology, right? Uh, the to whole total uh, of it, aggregate of all everybody's thinking, okay, will have, uh, will reflect the market psychology. And market psychology, uh, uh, people like uh, the technical analysts, okay, believe that this market psychology or this crowd psychology can actually uh, be uh, accurately uh, predicted to almost a very uncanny accuracy, right? That's the actually the, the, the premise of technical analysis, right? That uh, everything in the market is reflected in the price and all the market psychology is reflected in the price, okay? So what is a market? Basically, a market is a crowd of, of uh, very intense emotions and psychology. Right, and when it comes to this, uh, what do you call that? Uh, uh, crowd psychology. Okay, okay, I have this picture of Caesar here. Okay, you, those of you who enjoyed this uh, movie were very interesting, right? Okay, he he is the one that commanded a whole gang of uh, uh, this uh, uh, old species of apes uh, to conquer uh, in the US, right? But uh, I wanted to point you to this uh, very uh, uh, great guy. Okay, if you get a chance to read his book, uh, this guy. Uh, Gustav Le Bon, okay, and he looked. Uh, he he wrote this very classic book on uh, uh, crowd psychology, okay, and he called, the title is the crowd a study of the popular mind, okay. So in terms of talking about crowd psychology, when an individual joins, uh, he says generally in all situations when a uh, when an individual joins a crowd, okay, he, in his mind, in his mind, he goes through a transformation. He become a very different person, okay. You may not transform into the planet of the apes, but okay, but you. You will react something like that, okay? Number one, you cease to operate as an individual. When you join a crowd, okay, you cease to become a individual. You lose yourself, okay? You lose yourself and become something like a robot. Nah? Automaton is like a robot, okay? You follow the crowd, okay? And you cease, okay? Or you, you relinquish your ability to be guided by your own will, okay? It becomes a crowd's uh, will, okay? Uh, some of you who may have joined uh, crowded uh, events, okay? Uh, you may have already felt this, okay? When you join, okay? Before you join, you had your own thinking and all that. You had your own individual, individual views, okay? But if you join some crowd uh, event, okay, you could eventually, uh, or in, in fact, uh, without knowing it, okay, lose yourself, okay, and that is uh, one of those things that uh, Mr. Gustav has, uh, what do you call that, uh, uh, studied, okay, and uh, one of the effects is you accept ideas superficially, right, so if you join a crowd, you know, I don't know, I've never been to, uh, to a protest before, so if you join a protest, something, you may accept uh, certain ideas superficially, which may not be accepted, 
actually your view, right? So that's the essence of a crowd psychology, right? So in terms of crowds, uh, in terms of crowds in the market, in the if in, in the in what you call that, in the context of the market, okay, the crowds tend to do two things uh, uh, consistently, okay, and I've done it myself as well, okay. So let's see whether you do this or not, okay. Next slide. Let's see next slide. Huh? Okay. What do crowds do best when they do when they, they, they trade the market? Okay. And I do this as well. So let's see how many people uh, actually do this as well. Okay. So uh, uh, you may respond in the chat group and okay, you can say yes, you, you do this, right? The first thing that crowds do best is this. Okay. Buy market tops. Okay, have you done that before? If you have done that, put that in the chat group. Uh, buy market tops, buy tops, okay? I've done that many times in the stock market as well, okay? So crowds do that a lot, okay? Because crowd psychology always, you know, in the peak of the, the market, heat okay when your 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 aunties your uncles or your 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 vegetable seller is talking about this particular very hot stock okay you tend to join in and buy the market tops right so those of you who've done that maybe you know just put in the chat group whether you buy buy tops before okay just put bt there you buy tops before okay the second thing okay uh, that the crowds do best as well is this Sell market bottoms, okay, during the panic, okay, uh, when you're starting to lose money, you don't sell, but right at the bottom and everybody say die already, you sell the market bottom and that's the bottom that all those people have created and I've done that myself, okay, so those of you who've done that also put put in your your your, your input in the chat group, whether you have, you've sold market bottoms before, right, you sold at the low, you bought at the high and sold at the low, okay, when you're so frustrated, right, and a lot of people do that, yes, a lot of people do that okay it's quite common okay in the chat group yes a lot thank you for your response okay so it's very frustrating so in terms of talking about uh, trading uh, you have to be a bit different uh, you know if you got I mean, I, I, uh, my first uh, uh, foray into the stock market was in uh, 93, 94, you know, in, uh, when I was uh, uh, quite young, uh, no, not quite old already, uh, quite young, and I uh, didn't know much of the market, okay? So, you uh, know, well, trading the bull market during that time, uh, KLSE, right? The KL stock, uh, KL Kuala Lumpur Stock Exchange when that time was the name. So, you know, I, I bought a lot of stocks at the peak of it, uh, in January 1994, when the market told Totally turn. I was still buying. <laughs> so uh, until today, you know, of course, I've sold up all my stocks already, pretty bad prices as well. So that experience taught me a lot. You know, it taught me that um, you cannot act that way. You you cannot act like the crowd if you want to be successful in trading and also in investing. Okay, which is the crux of today's topic. Okay, so when you talk about psychology of uh, trading, what is the psychology? Okay, define. I mean, psychology is such a huge, huge topic, right? So when you talk about trading the markets and the psychology behind it, basically you're talking about this title you see in front of you, the psychology of taking risks, right? Basically, when you're going to the market, okay, you're putting up your capital and you're saying, hey, okay, uh, my view of the market is this and here is my capital, okay? You go in, you buy a share with that particular view, okay? Or you at a certain price, you take profit with the view that you felt that at this particular price, uh, uh, the, the markets may be topish already. So it's the psychology of taking risks, right? You want to learn the psychology of taking risks, okay? So when it comes to psychology of taking risks, okay? Um, who are best at doing it, huh? okay? So these days we talk about market, huh? markets are very volatile, right? Okay. Of course, we saw quite a number of opportunities, opportunities in Bursa lately as well. Okay. Uh, over the last couple of weeks, we some, saw some great uh, opportunities for trading. Okay. Uh, but uh, this year has been very volatile. In fact, uh, in some of you have experienced it after the year 2020, you know, uh, uh, 2021, very, very, very volatile. Okay. That's because so many things are happening. Okay. Uh, the geopolitical uh, political situation in Russia, Ukraine, okay, uh, inflation, okay, the pandemic effect, okay, although everybody is, uh, you know, coming out of it in uh, the rest of the world, but China also still find it very challenging because of their uh, zero COVID uh, policy, right, and, but because China uh, uh, is such a big uh, uh, contributor to the global economy, what troubles them will trouble the rest of the world as well and impact the rest of the world as well, so that's, that's uh, very, very uh, crucial to look at how China 
uh, is doing in terms of how they are coming up from this uh, COVID situation, right? Then in the US, you have the raising of the interest rates, the, the very uh, runaway inflation that uh, the Fed uh, thought that it was just a temporary thing, but no, you know, it currently doesn't look like that. And they, in a way, uh, are already a bit late in the game. So as they continue to aggressively, uh, what they call that increase uh, uh, interest rates, uh, it also affects us in terms of our interest rates in our country. So there's so much volatility, right? So the very, very important now in, in terms of taking risks, okay, uh, you also have to be prepared in terms of uh, whether you're good in terms of your mindset, okay? Because this is the new normal, right? So very interestingly, in terms of looking at uh, uh, what trading firms, okay, this is two pieces of news that I, I managed. There are a lot of, uh, of this uh, situation there, right? Uh, one article is from Bloomberg and the other article is from the, the Times in the UK, right? Talking about the big, big proprietary trading firms, these hedge funds recruiting poker players. Okay, why do they... Why do they uh, what do you call that? Uh, 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 recruit poker players to become, uh, you know, the the. the uh, traders on their floors, right? Okay, on the left, Bloomberg says that the world's best female poker player joins the world's biggest hedge fund, okay? Okay, so this is uh, Bridgewater Associates, right? The, one of the biggest uh, uh, hedge funds in the world and they, they, they employ people who play poker to become their traders, okay? And uh, in this uh, article uh, from uh, the, the Times, uh, uh, sorry about that, um, um, is uh, about this guy, uh, uh, Blue Crest Fund, hedge fund, right? He's talking about he looks out for people who actually goes into the marketplace, online poker, okay, and uh, try to, uh, to make money from there, right? So um, it's very, very interesting, okay? Uh, although I'm, I'm not very, very surprised, okay? Because um, in 1993, 94, okay, uh, I attended a, a seminar, okay, by this uh, very, very uh, uh, famous trade Either, okay, and uh, I may have related this story before, but uh, one thing is this: he came actually to to KL, okay, and he was at the Bankers Club. He was giving this uh, seminar, right? And uh, uh, it's actually a pre-event because he was selling his big seminar, which I couldn't afford at that time. I was quite young, okay. But we went to listen to his uh, his uh, uh, event pre-event, which he talked about his experience, uh, talk about his trading results and all that, okay. Uh, and then we were like trying to get some free information, I know trying to push him for free image. Hey, tell us now, you know, what do you think is the secret of, of, of trading? No? Yeah. What's the secret of trading? <laughs> so he said, you really want to find out what is the, the secret of trading, okay? Well, I can give you a lead, okay? He said that the, the, the best secrets of trading and investing, okay, can be found in the Las Vegas bookshops, okay? Wow, I remember it until today, okay? Why? Because... Uh, what what do they sell in Las Vegas bookshops? Okay, yeah, obviously they they won't be selling much of the cookbooks and the, you know how to raise a bonsai. Or they'll be selling books on how to how to speculate and how to play those games on Las Vegas uh, casinos, right? So very interesting. He said, okay, so I didn't have money to join him in this event. Very expensive. I think it's for like five six thousand. At that time, very young. Uh, just came out only where got so much money going to join five six thousand kind of. Uh, event right so uh, no money to join event but got money to find the books uh. so i went around the whole town going to all the section on gaming and all that I bought all the books okay and i have it until today you know you talk about books on poker you talk to a book on gaming uh, bakara arolet i bought everything uh, okay which i could afford i bought uh. okay and i studied i studied got secret uh, what is the secret of trading so i went in and, and read and read and read okay i realized two things okay when after reading that okay of course the realization didn't come immediately. It was later in my life when uh, I was in the industry, in, in the derivatives industry, okay, and, and myself had this interest in trading that I realized that the two things I really picked up when uh, I was reading those books is number one, okay, money management, okay, risk and money management. It was a subject that uh, we covered the previous session. And the second biggest uh, realization is, is all about trading psychology, okay. So poker players 
not only can master their own psychology, okay, they of course can read other people's uh, psychology. So to them, um, the cards which are dealt out, uh, you cannot control how the cards are dealt out. Just like in trading, you know, you cannot uh, you, you cannot know how the markets uh, will pan out, right? Whether it's a stock market or derivatives market, a commodities market or crypto markets, whatever markets you're trading, you don't know how is it going to pan out. You can never know 100%, right? It's how you play it as the cards are dealt, okay? So in poker, as the cards are dealt, what do you do? Do you hold? Do you fold? Do you, all those things, you know, uh, do you read the psychology of the market? All that, that comes into play, right? That's why all these uh, hedge funds, you are talking about top hedge funds here, hiring all these top-notch poker players, okay? Because they know the psychology of taking risks, okay? So let's dive in a bit on what is all this. Right, so there's this similarity. What is the similar similarity between trading and poker? Okay, let's let's examine this. Okay, number one is this. Okay, number one is this. Decision making is of course based on incomplete and information and 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 un, un, uncertainty. Right, you don't know what's gonna pan out tomorrow. You don't know what is gonna hit the market tomorrow. Right, and of course for the poker player, he doesn't know how, what cards are gonna be dealt in front of him. Right, so both are inherently risky in that sense. There's no guaranteed outcome all right so this is number one number two okay money management okay then this is uh, very important money management to the trader or the investor okay the management of the capital and the exposure and bankroll management okay in terms of poker playing of course you manage your capital uh, which is your bankroll okay is very crucial okay and managing this risk is extremely crucial to the success Okay, how you manage your capital, okay? Uh, without the right manage management, of course, even the best strategy, you, you can have the best strategy, okay? But it can lead to uh, you uh, losing all your money, okay? Both in poker and in trading, right? And what's next? The next is, okay, the winning and losing psychological patterns are similar. Because both are taking risks, okay? Both will feel the same psychological or emotional uh, uh, things like greed and uh, fear. Later, we'll cover this particular topic, okay? All these psychological patterns, all the errors in thinking are similar, okay? Making emotional decisions rather than rational decisions, for example, okay? This will hit the poker player and the trader as well. Okay, and uh, the other thing is, of course, uh, 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 trading and also uh, playing uh, at, at poker is a very step abstract activities in terms that in terms you need to master a lot of things, right? Uh, you, you need to uh, also practice and learn, right? So those of, of, of you who, who who are starting out in, in trading or investing, okay, you, you need to understand this, okay? Uh, Trading psychology cannot be read and understood from books. It must be done. It must be practiced, okay? When you put money at risk, only you will feel those emotions, right? So although you can practice paper trading, right? A lot of people do paper trading, you know, and a lot of people, hey, very successful. My system, very good. Huh? Paper trading can make so much money, but when they actually put real money into it, huh? it's totally different game. You are trading the same methodology, which you traded maybe the last six months testing the system. But then when you put real money on it, it's very different, okay? Whether you trade on a part-time basis and the trade on a full-time basis to Chari Makan, also your trading psychology is very, very different, okay? I myself know because I retired about two and a half years ago uh, from part-time trading to full-time trading. It's so, so, so different, right? So, so different and tell you stories about that afterwards, okay? So you have to practice and you have to learn, you know? It's not instantly tomorrow you can be a very good trader because you have not tasted it yet. You have not tested out your trading psychology yet, right? The fear and your demons, the greed and all that has not manifested until you put money on the table, right? Much like poker, much like trading, it's the same thing, right? So both are, right? Of course, in trading and, and poker, both are in very competitive environment, okay? And all, of course, driven by cash. Like, and cash, of course, has a very, very, uh, what do you call that, uh, uh, a big uh, emotional uh, attachment to everyone. Okay, not on uh, everybody has this very very big uh, uh, emotional impact when it comes to money. Right. So uh, this is uh, one of those things. Okay. Uh, and of uh, one last point. The last point. Okay. If you are uh, trading, okay, both them can resemble gambling. Right. Okay. 
Wow, you say poker isn't gambling, man? No, some people actually are very good. It's a very strategic game, right? So it can resemble gambling if you don't have any education, you don't have any practice, and it can be actually done in a very unhealthy way as well, right? So poker playing can be pure gambling for some people, right? And trading can be that also if you don't know what you're doing. Yeah, you can be gambling, right? And some people also not knowing that, that they don't have the experience or don't have the education, they're actually gambling, right? Uh, unfortunately, they don't even know that, right? So these are the similarities between trading and poker, right? And uh, I, I recommend some of you, uh, if you are not uh, allergic to reading uh, uh, books like that, now read, you, you find a lot of angles uh, and uh, those uh, champ world championship in, in poker, well, I'll tell you the stories they tell are amazing in terms of the trading psychology. So I recommend if you have, you know, download a few books and, and, and have a read and see how they think at the table, right? You'll find a lot of similarities between uh, trading and poker, right? So let's move on. Okay, now let's talk about this uh, thing, decisions and cognitive biases, okay? Uh, what is this very, very big, big, big word, uh, cognitive biases, okay? Basically, it's uh, thinking errors, uh, okay? Just like computer errors, uh, we have thinking errors, okay? And these thinking errors are, are, are cognitive biases in scientific uh, words, okay? Um, uh, uh, can help sometimes or actually uh, most of the time actually cause you to uh, make uh, very grave uh, trading errors, okay? Uh, and this is when you look at the information, okay? Well, it's looking at information, basically looking at either your charts or listening to news or whatever, okay? You, when you're processing the information from the market, if you have these errors, you, you will make wrong decisions, okay? Uh, but what are cognitive uh, biases? These are actually the brain's way to actually try to handle situations in life, okay? by simplifying okay, uh, certain things because from your experiences uh, uh, from young until you adulthood, okay, you collect a lot of these uh, biases okay? and the brain will try to organize this information into, into uh, big, big packages. Okay? And these packages, when you, when you uh, go to a certain situation, uh, the brain will say, okay, take out this package and then process and quickly come to a decision. Right? So the brain does that by organizing information in the brain. Okay? But sometimes this, this uh, uh, organization or this way it is organized is, uh, is very bad for your for, for trading, okay? The, in terms of, it will cause you to have errors in terms of your trading, okay? Because it affects what? It affects your decisions and it affects your judgment when one makes in the market, okay? So let's look at a few very popular uh, 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 biases, okay, that you should be aware of, okay? Of course, there are a lot of, lot of biases. You may want to, uh, uh, it itself, by actually, you can get a degree on this by itself, okay? Uh, basically, this is behavioral, uh, behavioral uh, finance talks a lot about this, right? So you can read about it, but I'll share with you a few very important ones that you want to catch yourself if you are making these mental errors, okay? And this is very, very common, right? So let's move on. The first is, okay, let's talk about decisions, right? So in terms of uh, trading in the market, you are always making decisions, okay? Based on whatever data that you collect, whether it's from technical analysis, you look at charts or look at news or you look at fundamental data to, to make a decision, okay? So uh, what is a right decision and what is a wrong decision? What is a good decision and what is a bad decision, okay? So this is a very important thing, right? So I want to talk about this. Imagine Imagine, okay, so you imagine, okay, if you go back into, imagine your best decision in your life, okay? Okay, some may say, wow, best decision in my life. What is my best decision in my life? Is it the one I married? Okay, some people may disagree totally, okay? Um, what is your best decision? Okay, think about that, okay? Reflect on it, okay? Uh, you can reflect, of, of course, after the, uh, the webinar as well, okay? But if you can think of it, what is the best decision you ever made in your life, okay? And uh, what is your worst decision you ever made in your life, okay? We probably find it probably uh, easier to answer the second question, your worst decision in your life, okay? Now, think of these two situations, okay? And then I will move on to the next slide, okay? I ask you this question, okay? Um, what make you, uh, what do you call that, decide that that particular thing you thought of is your best decision? And what were you thinking of uh, when you judged to say that that particular decision was the worst decision, okay? 
So is the best decision and worst decision judged because of the results? Okay, that's the key question. Okay, is it the result of that decision that made you think that that was a, not a good decision or that is a bad decision? Okay, so this is a very important bias that people, uh, uh, what you call that, uh, don't get it. Okay, decision versus results. Okay, they tie in decisions with results. Okay, they think that if you have a good result, it's a good decision. Or if you have a bad result, then it, that's a bad decision, but not necessarily so, right? Okay, so the thing is this, the question, are all bad results a matter of bad decisions? And are all good results matters of good decision, right? Now, okay, so let's get back to year 2020. Okay, some of you are very active in the market in year 2020, okay? And some of you probably made uh, good money as well. All right. So the thing is this: in for those who were new in the market and when they went went in to try the stock market in year 2020, and of course there were certain sectors that were really raging, uh, stuff like uh, uh, technology and also um, the the rubber glove uh, tech, uh, sec, uh, what do you call that um, sector. So we made a lot of money, right? So what is was it a result of good decisions? Okay. So you have to ask yourself questions. Okay, was it bad or was it because of luck and all that, right? So a lot of things, sometimes the results may be impressive, okay? But that may be not because of good decisions, okay? And not all bad decisions. If you made a, a trading uh, a decision that resulted in a loss, not necessarily that that particular uh, decision was a bad uh, decision, okay? And this is uh, what we call... Uh, this particular uh, bias is called resulting, okay? And this is a very common pitfall in terms of uh, and trading, in terms of uh, poker playing, and uh, in terms of the general populace when they put uh, uh, what they call that uh, uh, in life, okay? Uh, the thing that the results is a result of, of the decision, okay? So assuming, okay, what this resulting is, is called, is resulting is assuming the quality of the result tells you everything you need about the quality of the decision, okay? And this is uh, ultimately not true, okay? So you assume that your decision-making is good or bad based on the small set of outcomes, okay? Only a small set of outcomes you think, oh, it's good, okay? So in trading, it's like this, okay? Sometimes you will have uh, losses. Sometimes you have trades that uh, 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 didn't go well, right? And that ne not, does not necessarily mean that you have made a bad decision. Okay, your decision, if it's made from a very good process, from a methodology that has been thought out, okay, that have a particular edge, okay, we spoke about edge the last time, uh, or the last two times, okay, then if you made a decision which the result was a loss, okay, it doesn't mean, okay, that was a bad decision. Okay, and sometimes if you make a, a, a decision that uh, on hunch or you, you didn't actually make a right decision or you didn't have a process in your decision and then you made money in trading, okay, you cannot say that uh, uh, this particular uh, decision you made was a good decision, although the result was good in terms of profit, right? So this is a very important thing that you must ask yourself in terms of the process you have when making decisions to buy or sell or going to the market. Okay, do you have a good process? in terms of your, your decisions, okay? So that's one thing when we talked about the last time uh, uh, in creating a complete uh, trading uh, uh, strategy, uh, your trading game or your trading plan, okay? About your methodology and also about uh, money management. Do you have this process, okay? It's very, very important, right? So um, don't always think that, uh, you know, if you made money, it's a good decision or you lost money, it's a bad decision. Okay. Now, another very, very common hindsight bias is uh, this, uh, uh, you know, hindsight is basically, you know, if the, the Chinese uh, will say, you know, Chouji no Mohaki, that means if you know uh, beforehand, you will not be a beggar. Or <laughs> the beggar, if you knew things beforehand, you, he won't be a beggar, right? So this is hindsight, okay? Hindsight is something you can always say after the outcome has already been known, right? You say, you know, I, I should have seen it coming. Uh, I should have known what would have happened. I mean, it's so common when it comes to, uh, uh, comes to the market, right? This hindsight bias, okay? The other thing about hindsight bias also, your tendency to overestimate your ability to predict the outcome, okay, which cannot possibly be, be predicted, okay. Now, one thing I want to share with you about trading is this, you know, if um, when you 
you, when you go to uh, in terms of uh, move in your in your experience in trading, okay, you will come to accept one particular fact, okay. Uh, when I first started on it, I didn't really want to accept this fact, okay. But after you've experienced it, you need to know that uh, the markets, although you can use methods, okay, to improve your edge, okay, it is something that you may not actually possibly to predict. Okay, so uh, those of you who, who feel that you have a very strong ability to predict the market, okay, um, I, I would be very humble uh, to, to even uh, at this stage of my, my trading uh, number of years to say that you know, the markets can actually not be predicted. What you need to have is a game plan that has an edge. Okay, so in terms of hindsight bias, there will be people you hear, like, say, I told you, like, you know, I told you already, the market is going down. Okay, I knew it all along that the trend is up. Again, all this you hear it in the market, like, right? Okay, this is called hindsight bias. Okay, and everybody, you know, every day you, you see this, I like, you know, I should have known, like, I felt it, you know, all those things, right? So these are one of those very popular hindsight bias as well. Okay. The other one is self-serving bias. Okay, this one is the uh, wow. This one is uh, the tendency to attribute the positive events, uh, the good things that happen, uh, the winnings in your your trading or investment to your own character. Is wow, I'm so good. Okay, that's this guy saying. Okay, but the negative one is external factors. Yeah la, you lose money is uh, because of this guy la, This. But this syndicate, la, this Putin, I would blaming everything on Putin, right? It explains the tendency to attribute success to their own personal skills, right? And effort, okay? And attribute the failures to factors beyond their control. So external, la. you know, lose money is not my fault. You know, when I mean, make money, I'm good, okay? And I remember playing a game with a stranger on a golf course uh, that day, you know? He's, he's supposedly a very good player, la. he's sailor. I haven't played with him before, okay? And then he's came to be missing all his shots and say, oh, unlucky lah, today unlucky, unlucky. Okay, then when he hits a good shot, I say, eh? you see, I played like that, like that, like that yesterday, right? So this is self-serving bias, da. you know, this bluffing yourself, like you serve yourself only, okay? And this is not good for you if you think you are like that, okay? Um, in markets, it's better to be humble, okay? It's very better to be humble, okay? So self-serving bias is also quite common, okay? Okay, so... A bit on summary, those are the few very uh, uh, few popular uh, uh, errors in thinking, okay? Uh, that's uh, not good for your trading. Okay, there are a lot more, okay? You can read it up, look at cognitive biases and see what are those, okay? So when you, in summary, when you talk about making decisions in trading, okay? These are the very few important points that you need to know, okay? Understand and, and acknowledge that all trades are risky, because the outcomes are probable, okay? Outcomes are probable and not guaranteed, okay? So you may have a system uh, that gives you a good, a high probability, okay? That's why in the first session, we talk about high probability uh, trade setups, right? So even in any setup, okay, any system, any trading system or any method uh, to analyze the market, no, no, uh, what do you call that? Uh, 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 reading or no trades can ever be guaranteed. Okay, your market views can never be guaranteed. And most of the time, the, the market tends to prove you wrong as well, right? So in making decisions, accept this, okay? In trading, we need, we need to, to understand this, okay? Okay, traders are risk takers. So we are risk takers, right? Now, no wonder what you want to say about self. You're saying, you're, I'm investing for my children's education. Yeah, you're taking risks as well, right? You need to accept the risk inherent in every trade. Okay, you need to recognize and acknowledge there's risk. Okay, so it's not guaranteed, and because of that, there is risk. Okay, so all good traders need to be able to accept the risk of possible loss without emotional discomfort. I uh, put this in capital: loss without emotional discomfort. Okay, uh, this is something that's hard to learn. Okay, and uh, cannot be read from the book. Okay, if you haven't felt this and you have never gone through the process of it, you you can never learn this. Okay, so this thing about trading and investing, you need to go through your your baptism of fire. You know, which I call it. Right, you need to go through those losses. Of course as minimal damage to you as possible because losses will, it's part of inherent part of trading, okay? But you need to come to a stage. If you have a mastered trading psychology enough to come to a stage where uh, trading loss, okay, 
uh, you can lose without the emotional discomfort. Okay, of course there are techniques to make sure that you, you know, capital management, money management. We spoke about that. Okay, but in terms of trading psychology, if you can uh, have this, okay, you you can you understand you can lose without the emotional comfort. Then you have come a far, very come you've come very far in mastering trading psychology. Okay, so this is one of the uh, Tesla, one of those milestones. Uh, when you lose money, do you have emotional discomfort? Okay, all right. This is very, very important. Okay, and uh, this thing about the re the, the, the ability to accept the risk without emotional discomfort is the key success and psychological trait of successful traders. Okay, and the most important skill to learn. Okay, and this skill, <laughs> skill, uh, okay, this is not knowledge, uh, this can only be acquired by doing. Okay, it cannot be, be read theoretically, it cannot be understood theoretically. Okay, so uh, paper trading is fine to test the methodology. Okay, but paper trading, okay, will never, never, unless you put real money on the table or real money in the market, you will never be able to master trading psychology. All right, because it's about accepting loss without emotional discomfort. All right, so these are very important things when in terms of making decisions in trading. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so now let's talk about the understanding some of those uh, behavioral factors that uh, uh, impact your trading uh, performance. Okay, so we're going to look at some of the components. Okay, so of course, uh, the main thing is the emotions right, in trading. And what are these emotions and how they impact you? Okay, so as we look at uh, the, the first few slides uh, where Gustave Le Bon was talking about the crowd psychology, right? Once you enter a trade, Logic no longer applies. Okay? Gustav Le Bon said that you join the crowd, the market crowd. Okay, these thing, these two things will rear their heads, the ugly heads, right? Fear and greed. Okay, take over, right? Okay, All right. Those of you who felt this, uh, put yes in the chat, right? Uh, when you uh, no position in the market, wow, you talk to your children very nice. You have a nice conversation with the wife or your spouse. Okay, but once you put in the trade, wow, you become a totally different person. Okay, those of you who transform into a different uh, person after you put in a trade, put a yes in the chat group. Okay, I'm sure there's a lot of you. Okay, including myself, right? Why? Why? Because fear and greed now take over. <laughs> These fella jump into your body already. Song San, huh? the Chinese say Song San. Okay, they come into your body, right? Because why? The fear of losing money. Okay, and the greed for more money. Right? So this, these two things are the main the components when it comes to trading. These two will come and visit you and say hello. Okay? And they'll take over your body once you have a trade. Okay? So you need to master these two guys. Okay? You need to be able to conquer these two guys. Okay? So in terms of trading, there are three of these uh, things that are powerful, basic human uh, feelings and nature. Lah, okay? Fear, greed, and the last ego. Ego is also, a, oh, this is a big fella. Okay? You may not see it coming because uh, you think it's you, okay? but it's actually one of those guys uh, out there <laughs> that come and visit you as well. Why fear? Fear of what? Fear of losing money. Okay. Now there are other fears as well. Fear of losing face as well, which is part of ego, right? So the first big fear is you go in the market, you lose money. Okay. I, I invested this is uh, maybe my school, uh, my, my children's retirement or my own retirement. Or this one is, so oh, I need to pay to, uh, uh, next month's bill. I'm a day trader. I trade this for real time. I mean, uh, for, for uh, uh, full-time living. You know, if I don't make this, then next month, you no. Know, uh, they'll come and get my car or whatever it is, right? Fear of losing money, whatever the reason, okay? Number two is greed. Uh. People want to have more money, okay? Want to make a lot of money, okay? For different, different reasons, uh. okay? Some people need to make it over the long term. Some people need to make it for tomorrow, okay? Different, different reasons. Uh. This is this greed, okay? And then you have ego, okay? And this is very, very tough guy, okay? Ego is a very tough guy. It gets under your skin and you don't even know that this guy is, is already uh, taking possession of you, okay? Uh, and most people find it very difficult to admit they have this ego when it comes to trading, okay? Let's go in and talk and see what the few things a bit deeper on these three guys, okay? Okay, 
fear, number one, okay? So fear is actually the key source of trading errors. All your, a lot of your cognitive biases and all that has a, a very, very uh, base of foundation because of fear, okay? Because fear can come out in different, different ways, right? Fear of losing money, fear of missing out, okay? Anybody of you, uh, you know, those roaring days after the COVID, you know, during the roaring technology in 2020 and certain sectors, like you fear of, losing missing out okay so you jump onto the bandwagon and you know normally like us we all jump in at the top of the market right so this fear of missing out so fomo okay f o m o fomo fear of missing out was one of the big big factors okay uh, in that big run up of course you know uh, people kept buying and kept buying until uh, the market went very very well okay a lot of sectors went and of course it collapsed okay uh, the other thing is fear of being wrong okay this again is a problem okay psychological problem you go into a trade you fear that you are wrong Okay, the last is fear of leaving money on the table. Oh, did I take my profits too soon? Okay, you're so scared. Okay, uh, I, I, I take a profit at, at uh, two ringgit on the stock and it jumps to 12 ringgit. Okay, so you have all these things running in your head. Okay, so all this will cause you to have trading errors. Okay, so if you don't have a very sound methodology or you don't have a very good risk and money management or you don't have strategies how to take profit, then you know, all these things will come and haunt you, like this shadow here, you know, uh, you come and haunt you, right? Fear, right? And the thing most, the most uh, devastating in terms of fear, all these fears will come to this particular action that you don't do, okay? When you are losing money, you don't cut losses, okay? Because of all this fear, okay? You fear to lose your money. So one of those things that are uh, talked about a lot in terms of the uh, experts in string psychology, they talk about the capitalization, okay? What is capitalization? In terms of your trading capital, if you don't have enough trading capital, Okay, or if you're trading with scared money, scared money, right? It's money that you cannot lose. Uh. Okay, uh, you, you don't know where you got this money. Okay, uh, if you borrowed it from the for the illegal uh, uh, loan sharks or what that, you have money that cannot be lost. Okay, yeah, fear money, yeah, scared money, scared money. Okay, in terms of those experts in trading psychology, they always say scared money will always lose, okay? So if you have a psychology where, where you're trading and, and you cannot afford to lose, my best advice is don't, don't trade, okay? Don't trade because you cannot afford to lose. When you cannot afford to lose, you cannot cut losses. How are you going to cut losses? You cannot afford to lose, right? So this is a very important point, okay? And uh, in terms of trading psychology, uh, the experts uh, sort of have the view that if you have this problem, scared money, there is no cure, okay? If you're trading scared money, there is no cure. And guaranteed, uh, most of the time, if not 100% of the time, you will lose all your capital. Okay, so this is a serious thing. So you, you, you consider, if you are trading with money that you cannot afford to lose, okay, or it's not real risk capital, do be very careful. You know, it's, there are better ways to spend that money. Okay, uh, don't, don't use that to, to try to uh, make a quick gamble in the markets. Okay, and most of the time you will lose your money. Right? You may get lucky once or twice, but once you get lucky, you think you're good, <laughs> then you put in the same thing. You will lose it. You will lose it, guaranteed. Okay, so very, very important. Scared money, you always lose money. Okay, fearful money, you lose money. Okay, so if you can't cut loss, okay, you cannot cut loss. So what will you do? Okay, you will hold on to your position, right? Obviously, right? You paid for your stocks already. I hold, I hold, I already lost money already. Uh, you wait and see. Lo. A lot of people do that, wait and see. Lo. So the Hawkins, uh, wait, wait, wait and see. What is see? See is die, la, you know, in Hawken, you die. La. Uh, uh, wait and see, la. see they all, uh, like that. So the thing is this. Okay, this is a very, very, very big component in trading. It's fear, okay, fear. Okay, I felt this before, okay. Uh, even when I went into uh, full-time trading, I felt as well because now I need to make money, not really have to, but now you're making money charging market full-time, right? Okay, your palms can get sweaty, you know, certain situations uh, a couple of years back, you know, my palms were so sweaty that even my phone don't recognize me. You know, you use biometric, right? You you, you put behind, right? you don't recognize you also. Even my phone also don't talk to me when I, I have this fear, okay? So it's incredible what fear can do to you, right? Yeah, so this is a very big part. The second is uh, even the scientists go and have a measurement. So um, these guys, uh, uh, what is their names are not easy to pronounce. Kenman, uh, Nash and Teller in 1991, they did a study on 
fear, okay, uh, which they call the endowment effect, is people, uh, of course, have higher value to the objects they own relative to those that do not have. Okay, what does that mean? Okay, so if you put risk, uh, your capital at risk, right? Of course, you very precious this capital, right? So you, when it comes that you uh, comes to the time that you're gonna lose it, okay, you have this big emotional feeling towards that, right? As compared to the money that the market gives you or the profit, you don't have such a huge intense emotional effect. And they actually measured it, okay? They did a survey and they, they did a study with the individuals and they saw that actually in terms of, okay, you see the graph here, the left side is lost money, right side is gained money. You see, uh, and then the value of the emotional impact, you can see in, in terms of losing money. Lose five cents also, you see such a huge impact already. Okay, this one make 15 cents, I only go up by value of so little, right? So in terms of even studies, they already proven that um, the emotional impact of losing money is, is one of the biggest uh, fears when it comes to trading. Okay, so this is called loss aversion. People feel more pain when they lose money uh, compared to the emotional uh, intensity of uh, making money, right? So that's why realizing and cutting a loss is a lot, uh, very difficult for a lot of people, right? Because of this, right? So uh, losses are actually perceived to be two and a half times, they even measured it, two and a half times more powerful than making money, okay? So uh, losing money uh, is a very powerful, very powerful emotion. Okay, let's move on to the next one. What do we have? Ah, greed. Okay, greed is a big monster as well. Okay, so when you have greed, uh, you're only focusing on the money. You're thinking, okay, you make one trade. Okay, you say, wow, okay, I put 10,000 to it. Uh, or in one week, I, I meet uh, 10%. No. So then they start to calculate. Uh, okay, focusing on the profit and loss statement already, like this uh, gentleman from the Planet of the Apes thinking of how he's going to stack up his money already. If I can make 10% in this week, you know, wow, if I extrapolate it to the next four weeks, do you, do you guys do that? <laughs> you do that, right? I, I mean, I've done it before, right? So if I can make 10% this month, okay, and make a 10% every month, you know, and in seven months, I will double my money, da, 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 okay? So instead of focusing on the process, okay, rather than on the money, if you focus on the process, you are on the right track, okay? So if you only focus on, you know, how your money is going to multiply, like this gentleman over here, you will tend to have a problem, okay? And one of those problems you have is over trading. Okay, a lot of people commit too much, expose too much. Okay, uh, especially in my line uh, when it comes to derivatives, as leverage. Okay, people over leverage, over expose, right? And uh, when they lose money, it become even worse, right? They will double up or, or they will you know, put in even more money to try to gain back those losses, right? So this is a serious thing as well. Okay, so the next one is ego. Okay, this one, uh, the key question here is this. Uh, when it comes to trading, uh, do you want to be right or do you want to be rich? The key, key question here. Uh, okay, because ego can be a very invisible enemy. Okay, how is that? Okay, let's, let's consider this. A few of these bullet points that you'll see. Okay, high IQ and intelligent, very high intelligent people. Uh, it can be a big obstacle uh, because you think too much. Okay, okay. So uh, the 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 professor may have a problem because they think too much. They they analyze so many things. They analyze okay, one million and one factors to uh, making a decision. Okay, when it comes to making decision, if you have that, it can be a problem. Okay, it can be an obstacle to uh, your trading success. Why? Paralysis by analysis. Analyze until you can paralyze. <laughs> cannot, cannot pull the trigger. Cannot take a stop loss. Okay. Cannot go into a trade. Okay. Only know how to analyze. Okay. Uh, so when you get into a trade and problem. Okay. So let's say for example, you look at a chart. Okay. You look at the daily chart. Okay. And it says, uh, okay, enter. Okay. So you you buy a stock. Okay. And then things don't turn out good. Okay. A lot of people, uh, when I do that, especially in technical analysis, I see, oh, when the daily chart say, say either say sell already, the daily chart say sell or a wrong already in the decision. Oh, they'll go to weekly charts. Oh, weekly charts have not signal. The weekly chart say sell. You don't want to sell. You go to monthly charts. Okay. Then they hold on their shares for years, right? That's happened before, right? Holding uh, uh, shares that you lost money until today, 20 years. Okay, some of my friends still doing that. You know, held stock since 1993. Now many years already, almost 30 years already, still holding the same stock. Okay, a lot of them also delisted already. So problem, okay? Ego, you 
you want to be right or you want to be rich, okay? Okay, trying to figure out the market while in trading is a problem as well. If you are already in a trade, okay, you should know when your exit strategy is and when your profit-taking uh, strategy is. You cannot be analyzing the market. A lot of people analyze because they are wrong already. The market is, they're in the losses already. So they're trying to rationalize. They're trying to find reasons why they can still stay in the market and not <laughs> be emotionally hurt because they know it's a wrong decision, but you want to find things to support. Okay, the other thing is this, if you are in a position, uh, it's best to keep uh, the position uh, and not tell the whole world. The more you tell the world that you bought this and you have such a strong opinion on this particular thing, the more you cannot take a loss, right? So if you find yourself or you bought a particular stock and you need to go and tell the whole world, okay, you put so much money into it and this one sure go up one line, you know, I guarantee you because of blah, 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 A, B, C to Z, all, all the reasons, okay? When you hold too strong a, a opinion, okay? So when you lose money or the, the, the stock tanks, okay, you will stay with your position because you cannot admit that you're wrong, okay? Pine say, you know, you lose face. Okay, so that is a problem as well. Yeah? That's an ego problem. Okay, so there's theory and there's reality. So we treat reality. If you're wrong, you're wrong. You have a strategy to get out. Okay, you don't go and delve on the theory of why you're wrong. All right, so ego is a big problem as well. So these three guys or these three, um, I wouldn't say stooges. Uh, these guys are not stupid. Uh, these are not three stooges. Uh, these guys are so good at they can destroy your trading success. All right. Okay, so those are the key components of how you get into trouble when you're trading in terms of your emotions, okay? So um, what do you need to do? Okay, what do you need to do? You need to, number one, this is a very important word you see in front here. If there's nothing you learn today, you learn this the title of this slide is enough already in terms of trading psychology, okay? Get out of your own way, okay? Get out of your own way. The problem with trade uh, traders is they get into your own way, okay? And I still do it sometimes. You know, I have a good strategy. Honestly, my strategy, okay lah. Quite good lah. I still get into the way, right? Yeah, I still go and do the wrong thing sometimes, okay? I still try to be too smart. Of your own way, okay? Let's learn how to do that, okay? Okay, knowing thyself, of course, is very important. Like, you need to know your weaknesses. Like, okay, because as Sun Tzu, this uh, the Art of War, the writer of the Art of War said, okay, if you know yourself and you know your enemy, you do not fear, you will win all the battles. Okay, and if you only know yourself, you can still uh, win 50%. But if you don't know yourself and you don't know your enemy, Koya, finish. Okay, you will lose all your battles. Okay, so in trading is the same, in investing is the same. You need to know yourself, right? So that's a very important thing. Okay, because knowing yourself is 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 a key. All right, uh, of course, knowing the market and uh, what you're dealing with is very important as well. That will ensure further success in your trading and your investment, right? So trading beliefs, what is right? Okay, I'm gonna flash in front of you a few trading beliefs, a very common trading beliefs, and see what is your response. Okay. Okay, the first one I flash is this, okay? Um, do you believe that the market is a safe place to invest or trade? Do you? Hmm? Do you think it's a safe place? Okay, yeah, you can keep it in your mind and see, vote in your head and see. Or you think the market is a dangerous place to invest or trade, okay? What do you think? Dangerous? <laughs> uh, well, a lot of people say dangerous. Uh, yeah? Uh, Neutral, okay. Some good traders, they're neutral place. Okay, thank you for your uh, comments. Yeah, thank you for your participation. I appreciate that. Huh? And flash another one. Huh? Let's see what you think. Huh? Is it easy to make money in the markets? Huh? Ah, you can easily make money in the markets. Is that true? Huh? Oh, yes. Huh? Wow, very good. Only if you know the right time to answer. No, yes. Yeah, no. Mm, yeah. Thank you for your input as well. The next one, or you think it's very hard to, or, or you say big players control the market. La. It's hard for me. I'm the little guy. Big players, la. this, this uh, what do you call that? Syndicate, la. this fellow, you know, uh, spoiling, la. he controlled the market and all that. Huh? Do you believe in that? Yeah? No? No? Yes? Yes and no? <laughs> yeah. So you see a lot of uh, different, different beliefs, you know. Yeah. People have different, different beliefs. Yeah. It's tough to make a market. Of course, it's opposite of this particular question. Is it tough to make money in the markets? Yeah, the last two years has been 
tough, but very challenging. I admit, you know, the markets have not been very helpful. Yeah, but still, there are people who make money. Yeah, you believe that? Yeah. And the last one, ah, uh, do you need a lot of information before you can trade profitably? Do you believe that? Uh, some people say, hey, uh, I need a lot of information. No, ah, uh, this one they tend to have a, uh, yes and no and yes and no. Uh, okay, you see, um. Even these very common beliefs uh, uh, can, can put people into different, different situations. You can see from the chat group that different, different views. And the thing is this, I want to tell you something, that none of this that you wrote are right or wrong. Okay, These are beliefs. Okay, These are trading beliefs. Okay, And whatever, the only thing that you need to realize is this, whatever opinion that you have, whatever beliefs that you have, okay, what it does to you is it has an impact in your decision making and how you make decisions. Okay, so do you come from a, a way of decision that you make through fear or through confidence? Okay, through greed or through knowledge? Okay, so that those are the things that you need to to catch yourself. Okay, when you answer those questions, you have to catch yourself and review. Okay, because those opinions. And uh, what you call that about then those statements that you saw is not correct or incorrect one. It depends on, okay? There's no real right or wrong answers, okay? Different people have different beliefs. Why do people have uh, different beliefs? It's because we all grew up differently, all right? We all grew up to have attitudes on money differently, right? Some come from better backgrounds. Some come from difficult backgrounds, okay? Some uh, made it easy. Some made it the hard way. And each and every one of us had different, different beliefs, okay? That uh, some of them, a lot of that is unconscious as well. So when it comes to trading market and involves trading money, a lot of these beliefs, some of them unconscious, will act on the way you make decisions. So uh, one of those experts in uh, uh, training psychology called uh, Ben K. Tarp, you know, can read his book, very good author, Ben K. Tarp. Yeah? Basically, he says that you do not trade the markets. You trade the beliefs you have about the market, okay? Rightly or wrongly, okay? So if your beliefs are aligned and beneficial to your trading the markets, then you will see yourself have trading, uh, what do you call that, uh, uh, success. If you don't, okay, some beliefs will scuttle you, some beliefs will trip you, okay? Some beliefs will lead to a lot of these, uh, uh, the uh, biases, the cognitive biases, okay? So um, you need to check yourself, okay? Uh, what are your beliefs in the markets, okay? So if you have beliefs that are not helpful to you in terms of the markets, then you need to be you know, change them, okay? Or, or, or change, uh, transform those beliefs into more supportive beliefs, okay? So what is critical is your belief that a market is how it directs your thinking and your subsequent actions, okay? So every person will react differently because of their underlying uh, beliefs, okay? So this is something that, of course, uh, there's no time to really go in and check your beliefs, okay? Uh, some of the courses that I do last time previously, we go in and track what your beliefs are and try to see how to uh, better uh, beliefs. But uh, go on, uh, what you can do is this, my suggestion is this, right? Uh, go on to the online and, and check, okay? Trading psychology, trading beliefs, and how to uh, have better trading beliefs or how to transform uh, bad trading beliefs, okay? I'm sure if you check online, uh, you have even some self-check questionnaires that you can uh, tick off and to see where uh, you are not doing that well or where you're underperforming and uh, where you're doing well as well. Okay, so you can enhance those areas where you're strong and try to remove all those weaknesses. Okay, so uh, my suggestion is uh, try to go on some self online self questionnaires on trading beliefs and you may be able to at least diagnose some of the issues that you may have. Right? Okay, let's move on. Models of successful traders. Okay, so when you talk about models of successful traders, I would suggest um, you read this book called Market Wizards by Jack Schrager. Um, this is a book where actually he interviewed a lot of these very successful traders. Uh, and uh, the two key things I got from this book, and uh, um, uh, Jack Schrager also wrote a lot of other books on uh, stock market wizards and all that. Okay, so you can read his books and you find out from the interviews that a lot of these very successful traders have very consistent uh, trading beliefs and trading psychology uh, in, in terms of their, the way of they think when they trade. So it's very good. It's a good resource. I would suggest that mm, you read the book uh, from uh, Jack Schrager. He has a series on stock markets. Uh, this is his first book, Market Wizards, um, which is the classic, of course. This started it all. And uh, you can get very good uh, ideas on what the, all those successful traders uh, think, okay? How they think. 
me let me get some water. <clears throat> but in summary, in summary, uh, uh, the mindset of successful traders, these are few, six of the very important components. Number one, take responsibility for your decision. So everything that you do in the market, whether you're losing money or making money, you have to take responsibility for those actions, okay? Uh, you can, of course, review those uh, decisions that you make and uh, whether it was a good decision based on a process that you have, okay? If you don't have a process or you don't have methodology, then perhaps I would suggest that you acquire one or find one or read about it or, uh, or uh, what do you call that? Learn about it, get some education on how to set up, okay? Go back to some of the videos we, we we had the last few sessions and get some uh, pointers from there, okay? But very important that whether you lose money or, or make money, all actually is because of the trader. So you have to take responsibility in terms of the mindset. Okay, so all those trades, uh, the decisions that I make, okay? Whether I make good decisions or not, it's depend on uh, process, okay? So <clears throat> the second is trading, going with the flow, okay? So in terms of, uh, the market where it's going, go with the trends, okay? Go with the flow, right? Very, very important, right? Uh, that means in terms of trading, you actually want to go where the market wants to go. You need to be aligned with the market, okay? Don't go against the market, okay? Unless you have reasons for that or you have a system that actually trades contra to trend, right? So in terms of the flow, you go where the market wants to go, all right? Number three, understand that the market is not an enemy or a trend, Okay? The, the market no, no two hoods, okay? It doesn't know that uh, David Lowe has uh, a minute ago gone into a trade. Then suddenly, you know, the market decide that uh, I want to take this guy out of the market or stop loss him or whatever. No, right? A lot of traders come in and tell me, hey, how come the market seems no way my stop loss is? Uh, every time I go in, uh, the market will go in and take me out. Then after that, go my way originally, right? No, the market doesn't know, right? And... To, to say it very cruel, the market doesn't care, right? Because the market is all about different, different fella. The, the guy that you made money from, okay, you, you bought that stock and he sold, he may have lost money, right? The guy that you made money from is the guy uh, who lost the money to you, right? So you understand that market is not a threat, okay? It's neither an enemy, but it's not a threat, okay? Yeah, this is very important as well, okay? And the fifth one, of course, the fourth one is very important. You need to trade without fear, Okay. And uh, this needs to be acquired. Honestly, this needs to be acquired. Okay, yeah. So um, uh, once you've been there, uh, you, uh, that's why the strategy of having a stop loss and all that is very important. You need to have a good stop loss strategy, especially when you're first starting out, you need to master this uh, risk and money management, one very key roles in terms of uh, when you first start, make sure that you don't go into losses that you cannot come back, right? Because the market will always have the opportunity as you build up your skills, okay? And it may take one or two years, okay, to get good at this, right? So it takes practice. It's, you cannot be overnight success in terms of trading, okay? That will be an ultimate delusion okay i've been in this business for the last more than 25 years okay i've seen people who try to make it big fast okay most of them will fall on their face okay so very important uh, you need to master fear right we saw that master fear right trade without fear even when you're losing money you don't have that emotional discomfort okay understand that uh in terms of trading markets it's uh, about probabilities and edge right okay so edge is something we we spoke about a session a few sessions back and we talked about how to calculate your trading edge. Okay. So you must see whether the system has a positive expectancy or has an edge. Okay. If you don't have that, then you need to review your methodology. Very important. You need to review your methodology, right? And reviewing methodology is all about collecting statistics and all that. Okay. So all those things are very important. You need to understand that even though you have the edge, okay, it's still a matter of probability. Right, and, and lastly, in terms of one of those very important things is to see the markets objectively. What does it mean? That means you trade reality, you trade what you see, you don't trade what is in your mind, okay? Don't trade the imagined delusions that you have about the market, where it's going to go, right? Basically, even the experts, even the experts, okay? They don't really know where the market will go in the long term, okay? They may, they may have some, okay? Some people may have very specific uh, information, of course, those are maybe insiders, so they may know, okay? But generally, as a, someone outside of the insider circle, you, you know, basically uh, have to see the markets as it is, as it come and react and, uh, uh, and, and act as the market comes, okay? As the information comes, you will act and react on those information. 
okay? Whether to enter a trade or get out of the trade, take profit, uh, stop loss or whatever, okay? You need to look the, at the markets objectively, okay? Don't imagine the market that, oh, because I did this, then the market has to go out or because this particular reason the market has to go up. No, the, the market doesn't have to go up, okay? It depends on the decision of the rest of the guys in the market, whether the market goes up or not, okay? So it's very, very different. See the market objectively, trade reality, right? So next, Okay, this is the next one is the last slide before we go to question. Okay, and this I think important. I want to share with you this last slide. Okay, uh, the five fundamentals of trading. Okay, and highly recommend this uh, writer, Mark Douglas. Mark Douglas, if you want to talk about trading psychology, he's got really good books on it. Okay, and these five fundamental truths of trading is from this book called Trading in the Zone. Okay, uh, you can buy this book. I think uh, Kino or bookshops have it or can order it online. Or, you know, if you have a, you know, you can download a ebook version of it. Trading in the Zone by Mark Douglas. Okay, and I want to share because I feel that these five fundamentals are very important in terms of what we discuss uh, today. Okay, so the first is this. Anything can happen, right? We said already, anything can happen. So don't try. You can have an edge, okay? Of course, when we move in, a, uh, put our, our uh, trade scene, we hope for the best, okay? But accept that anything can happen okay number two you don't need to know what is going to happen next in order to make money okay uh, this is uh, this is something that a lot of people cannot accept huh? yeah you need don't need to know so some of you may feel that i need to have all the information okay but it is not possible because why there are always other people who know more than you okay nowadays some people trade uh, what you call that the events, okay? Trade data. Uh, they go in and trade specific data, okay? Now, all the uh, uh, the trading, especially in the US and all that, all these uh, traders are connected through the AI machines and their algo machines and all that, right? And all these are waiting for data as well, right? So they can react to data or information way, way faster can, than us as individual retail uh, traders. Even if you have a Bloomberg screen, doesn't mean that you have uh, better information than the rest of the guys. You may have an edge over other, uh, 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 what you call that, uh, individual traders, okay? But you don't need to have all that, okay? You don't need to know what's going to happen next in order to make money. You make sure your strategy has an edge. That's very important, okay? So in terms of also, let's say you say, oh, well, my system has an edge, oh, but uh, also need to recognize there's a random distribution between wins and losses for any given variables that define an edge, okay? So you say that your system out of uh, 10 trades, okay, uh, will make, uh, what do you call that, uh, it will win, uh, say, 60% uh, of the time. That means uh, out of 10 trades, you will make six trades, okay? Uh, sorry, you'll be profitable six trades, okay? But you don't know the order of the trades. It can be a loss, 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 Four times lost before you start winning, okay? And some people on the fourth time already lost all the capital, right? So the distribution of the wins and the losses are random, okay? So your system must be able to be able to go through that. So capitalization is important. That means you need to have enough capital. If you have a sound system, you need to have enough capital to go through what we call drawdowns, okay? Those are called drawdowns, okay? Your first four losses before your six wins come, right? If you already, fourth one already, Koya already, bye-bye already. So the sixth one come also no point, right? Even though it's system. So you need to understand that there is a random distribution between the wins and losses, okay? The, the fifth one is, an edge is nothing more than an indication of a higher probability, okay? Of one thing happening over another. That means your trading system, if it has an edge, that means over the long run, okay? You will have a positive in, uh, uh, outcome, all right? So that's one of the fundamental truths of trading, okay? And the last one, every single moment in the market is unique, okay? Um, of course, uh, some of the technical analysts uh, will say, hey, you know what? Because markets repeat itself, yes. Uh, market psychology uh, and patterns repeat itself, but every single moment is unique because we don't know what's going to happen after that, okay? So no, uh, every single trade, even when I go in and say, okay, let's see how it happens. Although, uh, you know, when I do the same rules, I enter the market under the same rules, doesn't mean the outcome will be the same or the, the sequence of the events will be the same, okay? So if you understand these five fundamental truths of trading, I think it will help you a lot in terms of how you think about the trade, okay? Because if you accept this as truth, okay, then your thinking will change along with this, okay? So you search out for ways that will conform to these five fundamental truths of trading.
Okay, so I hope that helps you. Let's get on to uh, Q&A. &E. I see some Q&A &E as well. Well, uh, uh, Shane may have uh, gotten some questions as well. So let's move to that. Shane? Oh. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much, David. This is another marvelous session by you again. Thank you. <laughs> so yes, if you have any questions to ask our speaker today, you may write them at the Q&A box. So we we'll address them with the remaining time. The first question is by Ahmad Johari. Mm. How do you handle when you hold a long position but the price goes south mm. i don't have a stop loss because it's too volatile uh, mm. after you know the price shot back up mm. so the dilemma is always to refrain from market cut loss due to the fear of a big loss mm. okay so okay the question. a wonderful question Ahmad. okay so um if you find that you're trading a volatile market Okay, so and, and you find that your stop loss, you know, okay, what you're saying just now, you, you say you know, your stop loss, you don't have one because uh, the market is very volatile. Okay, so there can be two reasons why you don't have one stop loss. Either you have a position uh, that your technical stop, say, let's say, for example, if I assume that you have a, a technical system or your system uh, to, to enter the trade. So if also you have a strategy for getting out, then you're saying, hey, from the position that I go in and the position that I may get out, uh, there is a lot of loss, uh, what do you call that, uh, involved, okay? So either your position size is uh, very big, okay, that you have to take such a big loss, okay? So the tweaking may be in your risk and money management. So you may have to reduce your sizes, okay? So uh, in that sense, one way is to tweak your sizes, okay? Number two is this. Um, I also realized that one thing that uh, a lot of people say that, okay, some people say you have a very tight stop, okay? Sometimes a very tight stop may, may not work on no? because uh, you have to give the markets its leeway. As you said, the market is volatile. So you need to give it a, a breathing space to move, okay? So you must be, be able to at least measure what is the reasonable movement, okay? So sometimes it can be more volatile, but uh, things like ATR and all that, I use ATR to see what is the general movement, okay? So in terms of putting my stops, I will look at the ATR. Let's say, for example, if I'm trading a hourly chart. So I'll look at the uh, hourly chart and say, okay, this particular uh, stop I'm trading, what's the ATR, the average true range? Right? It's an indicator that I can find, okay? So my stop, if it can be within two times of the ATR, Okay, so um, that's generally in good trading, uh, two times the ATR is the uh, stop. Okay, that's the the, uh, uh, the leeway that you give the market. Okay, so one of the ways you can do is, okay, look at the ATR. Either adjust your size of your trade position size that you can be able to take the stop loss. Okay, or adjust uh, to see whether uh, you are within that volatility or not. Okay, so sometimes, uh, not every time they will take you out. Of course, some trades you are good, you may not take you out. Okay, but sometimes it may, because of volatility, take you out. Okay, so um, sometimes markets are very volatile and can be unavoidable, right, in terms of that. So that's how I see it and I, that's how I work around it. Okay, because markets are volatile. I, I hope that answers your question, Ahmad. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, David. Hmm. So the next question is asked by uh, Zi Xian which also happened to I think many of the investors. Mm. Now, should we cut loss even when the company's fundamental is good? Mm. Okay. One company is good. So it's a good stock to invest. Okay. Uh, uh, what do you call that? Uh, whatever the time. Okay. Now, sometimes it depends on how you, how you trade. Okay. Um, for me, okay. Let's say I identify this particular stock, I like this stock, okay? Management has always been good, okay? But I may have uh, uh, timed myself wrongly into the trade, okay? So because I, I may have timed it wrongly, okay? So uh, this time I trade this particular stock, I'm wrong, okay? So it doesn't matter, but still believe in this company. So I may find myself another entry point to get in, okay? And this entry point, uh, some people hate it because they have to buy higher, <laughs> Okay, some people say stop out, then buy higher. Some people don't like it. Okay, but sometimes also you stop out, then you can find a re entry lower. Okay, so it depends. Uh, it depends on that particular stock. Okay, so when you believe in that stock, of course, you continue to invest in that stock. Okay, so the question, of course, uh, you're saying that should I continue to hold? 
Okay, okay, so I continue. Whole, okay, now the thing is this um, if you don't follow a, a systematic way to manage your capital, okay, uh, you may find yourself in situations that uh, holding one particular stock that used to be good, okay, be because of what? Because of systemic risk, okay, because of a guy. I'm not blaming Putin, okay? I'm not saying that he's a bad guy. A lot of people feel that he's a bad guy. I'm neutral on that, okay? Because of systemic uh, risk, okay? That particular good stock has to come down as well, okay? That, that's why uh, fund managers also go in and hatch, okay? Uh, to protect the risk. It's a market risk, okay? It's, not so, it's no longer a company uh, risk, okay? It's a market risk. So sometimes you have to put a stop there. We need is copying the problem. It's the general market sentiment that is... Uh, uh, it's bad, okay? So you don't want to be uh, spending your capital to take that right down downwards, okay? When you can actually buy a lower next time or, or later, right? So my uh, suggestion is this, right? So either you retime your entry after that stop loss because that stop loss has a certain meaning, right? It means that maybe it has broken a certain uh, 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 trend line or maybe it's broken a certain fractal or ABC is a sell signal, right? You may not want to be in the market uh, at that moment, for that particular stock, you can always re-enter, okay, and th uh, when things have changed, okay. So a lot of good stocks also go through bad times because of certain certain situations in the market or even in a global situation, right? So in terms of trading, it's very you need to be very protective of your capital, okay. Even though it's your darling stock, okay, don't fall in love with it all the time, okay. Sometimes your darling also can bite you, right? So um, re-enter. It may be sometimes a higher price or sometimes most of the time, uh, if it's against you, you can enter at a better price. So that's my best suggestion uh, for Tsushin. Okay, I hope that helps. Sure. Um, the next question is by B. Kim. What should we do if our stop loss is not matched? Because the stop price drops so rapidly that it has already gone way below the stop limit order. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what should do? Wow, should we do uh, to repair the straight? Ah, so <laughs> sell even lower. Okay, the thing is, um, uh, so, um, that one is of course if you talk about pure pure rules, uh, you have to sell. Uh, you sell, you sell. Uh, maybe it's a bad price. Okay, and I do sell. I do um, sometimes um, when I trade the markets and the market gaps up, right? It just it open already and what down so much already. How? Okay, ah. Uh, so to me, I get out first and see the situation, okay? Um, so that's my view and uh, that's what I do, okay? Uh, sometimes it's painful, right? So that's why um, your, your exposure, okay? Ex your exposure in, in this kind of situations, right? Even if it's a very bad, uh, bad result, okay? It may not be a bad decision, as I said. Um, you may have to bite the bullet. For me, I bite the bullet. Okay, I always have my stop loss. If it triggers, it may be a bad feel. I call it a bad feel. That means it triggers, you know, maybe even 10% away from where I'm supposed to get out. I, I get out. Then I reassess the situation. That's that's what I would do, right? So um, that's my opinion. Yeah. Back to you. I hope right, that helps speak him. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, David, for addressing the questions during the QA session. Mm -hmm. So um, I think we shall uh, call it a day for mm -hmm. today's session. So thank you everybody for uh, tuning in. Thank you so much, uh, David, for sharing with us the trading psychology key to master the market. Thank you so much, David. Thank you. It's a pleasure. <laughs> All right. So for our next webinar, it's happening on this, uh, on tomorrow, okay, which is volume done Harga Component Printing Dalam Berdagang. Okay, it is a Malay session that's happening tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock. So if you want to learn about how to price and volume play a role in trading, uh, come tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock as we host you in this session. All right, so I've given you the registration link. Of course, the session will be conducted in BM. So certainly if you want to learn this in BM, uh, do come and join us tomorrow morning at 10. All right, so with that, I want to, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you just heard from Mr. David Lowe, who is the managing partner of X Modest Trading Group PLT. So thank you so much, David. Thank you, everyone. Thanks right, for joining. Have a great rest of the day. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.